happy morning children last class we completed till plasmotomy under the topic of fission today we are going to learn sporulation one among the type of fission and we are going to start other modes of asexual reproduction too previous classes we completed binary fission multiple fission strobulation plasmotomy and sporulation right now we are going to see sporulation example amoeba it occurs during unfavorable condition amoeba multiplies by sporulation without encystment in this method amoeba multiplies by sporulation see the second point in this method amoeba multiplies by sporulation without encystment will able to recall encystment of amoeba under the topic of multiple fusion in amoeba yes see here this is actually a multiple fusion in amoeba what will happen amoeba withdraws its pseudopodia and secretes chitinous cyst wall which is three layered and protective cyst wall surrounds amoeba amoeba becomes inactive this phenomenon is called as encystment then amoeba undergoes multiple fusion which forms pseudopodiospores inside it when the condition turns into favorable what will happen the cyst wall get breaks then it releases and pseudopodiospores right the main difference between sporulation and encystment in encystment chitinous cyst wall which is three layered protective layer formed around the amoeba in sporulation which does not happen got it right yes but in sporulation encystment does not occurs at the time of unfavorable condition a mature parental amoeba's nucleus breaks into see the diagram a mature parental amoeba's nucleus breaks into small small pieces that pieces is called fragments or called chromatin blocks parental amoeba's nucleus breaks into many small fragments and we can say that is chromatin blocks each fragments or chromatin blocks forms a nuclear membrane around it and surrounded by a cytoplasm right see then it develops as a spore case spore case got it shall i repeat it again at the time of unfavorable condition mature parental amoebas nucleus breaks into chromatin blocks that chromatin blocks surrounded by a nucleus membrane and become surrounded by a cytoplasm see then it develops as a spore case spore case right when the condition become favorable parental body get disintegrated and liberates the spores free liberated spores these spores act into young amoeba shall we recall it again yes in your textbook they given like this this is actually a textbook diagram i highlighted here like a cycle yes during unfavorable condition parent amoebas nucleus gets breaks into chromatin blocks forms a nuclear membrane and becomes surrounded by a cytoplasm then it is surrounded by a spore case see the diagram then it is surrounded by a spore case that pink color part i indicated as a spore case during favorable condition parental body get disintegrated and liberates the spores the spores hatches and forms an amoeba right next we'll see other modes of asexual reproduction i hope you completed fission fully right now we are going to see a new topic budding what is budding the small bulb like projection coming out of the parental body is called bud it is a type of asexual reproduction small bulb like projection formed from the parental body 
is called bud it is a type of asexual reproduction there are two types of budding see there are two types of budding exogenous budding and endogenous budding in exogenous budding in exogenous budding we are going to see two examples example number 1 leucosolenia sponges example number 2 hydra right in endogenous budding we are going to see two example noctiluca marine dinoflagellate example number 2 fresh water sponge and in some marine water sponge gemmule formation occurs these are the two example we are going to see another topic of endogenous budding first we'll see exogenous budding budding in leucosolenia parent body produces one or more buds see parent individual parent produces one or more outgrowth at the base that is bud forming right that young bud start to grow and constricts at last it detach it start to detach from the parental body and become as a daughter individual finally develops into a new sponge this is exogenous budding what is exogenous budding a bud formed on the outer surface of the parent body exogenous exo means outer growth exogenous means outer growth the bud formed outside of the parental body that's what it is a exogenous budding first example leucosolenia we completed leucosolenia means sponges right this is a real leucosolenia shown under the water next example of exogenous budding as hydra buds are formed on the outer surface of the parent body as i told you before buds are formed on the outer surface of the body example hydra when food is plenty outer ectodermal cell see this is a full view of hydra sectional view of hydra outer pink colored highlighted part is a ectoderm and middle part is a mesoglea because mesoderm is absent here which we studied in 11th standard itself the inner the blue color highlighted part as the endoderm then shaded internal part high highlighted here as a gastrovascular cavity right outer ectoderm middle mesoglea and inner endoderm the interior cavity is called it as gastrovascular cavity right when food is plenty the outer ectodermal see the diagram the outer ectodermal cells increases when food is plenty outer ectodermal cell increases and form a elevation on the body surface then outer ectodermal cells inner endodermal cells pushed out to form the bud outer ectodermal cells and inner endodermal cells are pushed out to form the bud but as interior lumen see but also have interior lumen what is lumen it is a chamber or cavity but also have interior lumen which is the continuation of the parent gastrular cavity but also contains interior lumen which is the continuation of parent gastrovascular cavity but enlarges and develops a mouth and a circle tentacles see this is a individual parent hydra growth of bud on the outer body surface bud develops a mouth and tentacles bud enlarges and develops a mouth 
and a circle of tentacles at free hand after getting the full growth but constricts see but constricts and detaches from the parent body and leads an independent life right this is exogenous budding in hydra shall we recall it again from the points buds are formed on the outer surface of the parent body example hydra when food is plenty the outer ectodermal cells increase and form a small elevation on the body surface then the ectoderm and endoderm pushed out form the bud it contains bud contains an interior lumen in continuation with parents gastrula or gastrovascular cavity bud enlarges develops a mouth and circle of tentacles at its free end when it reaches the fully grown stage from the parent body it leads an independent life right this is actually a real hydra with budding under the microscopic vision right next we'll see the budding in yeast actually in your 12th textbook they they did include this topic in textual content but in the book back question they added in the form of distinguished question book back question itself they are added but the content is not present in your textbook the question is difference between budding in yeast versus budding in hydra so shall we recall the budding in yeast which you studied in your previous year classes yes budding in yeast a small bud appears as an outgrowth from the parent body this is a yeast cell parent yeast cell a small bud appears as an outgrowth from the parent body then the nucleus of the parent yeast nucleus of the parent yeast elongates see the nucleus gets elongates split it into two parts one of this nucleus migrates into the bud then fully formed bud detach fully formed bud detach from the parent and grows into new yeast cells sometimes budding will repeat to form a chain of bud cells at the time they cannot detach from the parent yeast they appears one other like continuous chain see repeated budding form a chain of bud cells children for further explanation please watch session 2 video thank you children